Here's what the observer wrote. The WWE signing of Gail Kim this past week after her TNA contract expired, may be the first of some interesting TNA contracts to watch as both companies try and navigate going into the new year. TNA created the knockouts division last year to build around Kim as the top star. The division has become from a rating standpoint, TNA's most successful entity. While Kim has not been the centerpiece of the division in recent months, internally, she was still considered the top performer and the glue of the division because she kept a lot of multiple person matches together with largely inexperienced women that would have likely fallen apart. She'd been with the company for two years in a mostly valet type role before the company established the division. And when spike increased impact to two hours last fall, the women here were put in filler segments, just as something with, uh, very little context on the way of booking. Naturally, they became more popular than the overbooked segments on the rest of the show. More than anything else TNA had, including big name stars like Kurt Angle, Sting, and others, it was the women, mostly Kong, Kim, and ODB, who drew the best ratings of anyone on the show. The final Kong and Kim match that aired on August 21st did a 1.2 rating, the best quarter hour for TNA in months. It was largely the, the dynamic of Kim, a great underdog worker when faced with the monster awesome Kong that created the division's popularity. They stole the show on more than one pay-per-view with some of the best women's matches in decades here in the United States. And it was that success that led to them getting multiple segments per show and the creative time spending more time coming up with their angles. It opened the door for ODB and the beautiful people to become stars. But even though ODB quickly became more popular than Kim as a baby face and Kong was the monster who was the biggest star, most in the company always acknowledged Kim as the glue, who was far more valuable than most fans would even realize. She has improved greatly as a worker over the past year. At first, all the women's matches were laid out move for move by the agents, but as of late, she started to understand what to do and when to do it. Kim, who's 32, had her contract expire at the end of this month and received an offer from WWE that was said to be substantially more than what TNA felt it could match. No figures have come out as to what the ballpark of that is, but WWE doesn't usually offer high downsides to the women. One friend of hers described it as, quote, sometimes you just reach a point in your life where as sad as it is, money is a decision maker over where you'd be the happiest. This is a big blow to TNA and not one that gets a lot of discussion. But once you guys started to spend some time with the women on TV, it took off and she's sort of the glue. She's sort of, for lack of a better word, the female AJ styles of the promotion. And now she's headed to WWE. I'm sure that gave you heartburn. What can you tell us about hearing she had the offer and trying to wear both hats of as a talent, understanding it, but as an owner trying to keep her. You said it. Um, and you know, Gail was with me and America's most wanted when there was no knockouts division. Um, and so her personal journey because she was with WWE and basically given nothing. And I'll call it turn the, the, not uh, maybe you call it the divas era, the broad and panty. Yeah. You know, there just wasn't any kind of wrestling. And when I look back now, uh, at super uh, grateful, but uh, appreciative, but really look at the context of what was put together in the era of cable television TNA was the first, the knockouts division, you know, eight, 10 ladies that all had different personalities and put together and it was new and by design, um, less is more. The stories were simplistic. The characters were easily to understand. We started, and this is something that I think, um, is, is, uh, I'll say a lost art, but, but just, no matter how you slice it and dice it, we all kind of get so caught up in eight stories on one show and six stories on another and all this. We really started with one story, Gail and Kong. Now we added talent to, to build the division out, but the main story was Gail and Kong. And yes, Gail being the baby face, it was so easy to understand. She had to overcome the, you know, she was the dragon slayer and the dragon was, geez, my dad's terminology was, was the, was the dragon, but it was so simplistic and yes, it got over. And then we added one talent and did a little bit more with another one, 
a little bit more with another and the building blocks and building blocks and building blocks. And the division was hot and it got great ratings and it did steal uh, show stealers on multiple, um, not just uh, pay-per-views, but TVs as well. And Gail was through it all. And then you see her rise to the top. And, you know, I, I had that conversation with Bob Carter on more than one occasion, Bob, if they want a talent, there's no chance unless you really want to go into that pocket more. And he didn't, and I got it. Um, we were never going to outbid uh, WWE, never, ever. Um, and, you know, it, it's just today, it's a different set of circumstances. And, you know, women's wrestling now to me has been around uh, in this type format, 15 years. So the bloom is off. It's different. Um, you know, I've heard of, of late, I think Becky made some comments and uh, others have made comments, uh, you know, about, you know, the time that women get and not get and style of matches and all this, we just live, we're 15 years into the women having their own division. And so I just think times have changed some for the better, some for the worse, but in this time, this day and age, Gail being, as you phrased her, the AJ Styles uh, of the knockouts division, it, it, there's no doubt we created value collectively, Gail and 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 the TNA team, and she got to move on to a much bigger contract that we can offer. And, and everyone internally, they were grateful for the time and appreciative, and we understood. As a business person, did any of us want to lose her? God almighty, no. We all knew the value that she brought to the knockouts division. We, we did. It was that simple.